hates you. Something that appears to be inflammation showed up on my last MRI. So the doctor ordered a new MRI. So let's go figure out what this is. I have an appointment. What's your last name? Oh, Because I, I, I use the same software that they, they use, mm -hmm. but so I measured it. And it's, I confirmed it. It is bigger this last. But yeah, well, what does that mean? That's the thing. Yep, that's what I'm saying. I'm actually excited for this one because I feel like I feel th big things are happening. So we'll see what it says. So the radiology report reads decreased conspicuity of faint peripheral enhancement of some of the lesions seen on the prior study. I won't see my doctor for another month, but I don't think it was inflammation. This 2022 MRI was looking at a particular sclerosis. <laughs> I've named him Este Benito. I figured out how to calculate Este Benito size. I decided to use all three planes. Axial, which is top to bottom. Sagittal, which is left to right. And coronal, front to back. They are all needed to measure Espinito's three-dimensional size. I started by scrolling through and find him on the T2 axial plane. Then I went up to the 2D, 3D reconstruction tool and I scrolled down and selected 2D orthogonal and PR. That splits the window into the three planes. The one on the left is the high resolution one that I used to measure. The other two are low resolution and are used to find Estebanito in the 3D space. Once I targeted him in all three windows, I hit the letter L to select the length tool. Then I drag from the top of Estebanito to the bottom along the green line. I took the reading and put it in the first line of a cubic millimeter calculator I found online. I closed out those windows and I did the same for the sagittal view and then the coronal view. I went through all the years of my records and entered them all on a graph. The result, it brings a smile to my face. My neurologist brought up that it might be time to switch to us from her DMT. She mentioned Ocovis. Since my MRI showed Estebanito had shrunk to back to where it was in 2020, I didn't want to switch, but I think now my attitude is changing because I've been staring at that graph too much. I never had a great love affair with the Sabri. I tolerated it fine, but going back and having it reinfused every month was a real pain. When I first started to Sabri, my MS symptoms were life changing couldn't walk, couldn't stay awake, couldn't think straight. Sometimes I couldn't feel, but the graph shows it clearly. Weightlifting was the escape that transformed my MS. The combination of the two, weightlifting with Tisabri, started to shrink Espinita. 
but the graph shows more of the story than just that. In 2016, I became JC virus positive and switched drugs to Jolimia. Even though Estebanito now is smaller than ever, I think maybe Okavis might shrink it to a new low. The recent Harvard study confirms that the Epstein-Barr virus is what's needed to develop MS. And that changes everything. It kind of confirms that I'm on the right track. Ogrevis. Yeah, Ogrevis. So Ogrevis is a B cell depleting medication. Yeah. It's a heavy duty. I know you were on Tysabri at one point, yeah. but your JCV became a problem. Mm -hmm. So we had to swap you and you did okay. And now you're having some relapses. I mean, Radiologically you are. That area is quiet this time. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's there. Mm -hmm. It's been there for a while. Sometimes when someone has a radiological relapse, that same area becomes um, hot again, if you yeah. will. So Ocrevus is probably your next option. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully this um, COVID thing is on its way out, or yeah. at least to a point where we can manage it with more less symptoms, you know? Yeah. Do a, a follow-up MRI in six months. Yeah. You don't have any symptoms though, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't have any symptoms. Actually, all my symptoms are gone now. I just, uh, I, I just, I've been learning about the, the recent Harvard study that pretty much said, you know, they're pointing at uh, the Epstein-Barr virus. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm thinking Okavis, you know, they're, they're saying that, that Epsom Bar might be a problem. I'm thinking, you know, if Epsom Bar, if it's infecting my B cells, that might be a... So my understanding with uh, viral um, causation of MS. Oh, I don't think it's a cause. I think, I think, mm -hmm. I think... It, I, it's kind of debatable. There's a lot of MS. Yeah, I, I think, I think it's, it's, it's not necessarily a cause. It's more of like a necessity to, to develop MS. If you have the predisposition for it, yeah, and then exactly. you catch, uh, you know, Epstein-Barr, then what happens is your immune system is more likely to overreact. Mm -hmm. So then you become autoimmune, mm -hmm. you know, compromised. Yeah. That's what the neurologists are arguing about now. Yeah. I so I think, I think Epson Barr kind of came, came in and kind of set it off. That's probably true. I mean, almost all of us have had an infection of that. Coming up to the big day soon, about a week away. So I'm going to have my last Mazent. I don't regret going on Mazent. I think after Tisabri, uh, but I don't know if that was the right choice. I think Estebanito could have shrunk a whole lot quicker and a whole lot better and faster if I had stayed on a stronger DMT, like Jelenia, or not <laughs> Jelenia, like Okravis, but just going, going amazing and my essential elements, <sighs> Now I, I feel just this amazing feeling and it's just everything is just changing. It feels like every day is new things are happening, better things are happening. And now I'm just so excited. Lifestyle definitely has its place, but it can't eliminate Epstein-Barr virus. EBV is one of the most common viruses out there, and practically everyone has it. I think I probably became infected as a child because my first neurologist, when I was 22 years old, saw sclerosis and said they looked like they were about a decade old, so that, that would make me 12 years old. <sighs> they triggered my MS. I know it's the reason Espanita remains. But is that it? Or is there more to my recovery? <sighs> More to the mystery I'm about to discover.
You know, I'm kind of thankful for my radiological relapse. I didn't feel it. It led me to Epstein-Barr virus. I know this feeling is the new normal. There's a new sparkle to my life. If there's ever going to be a cure for multiple sclerosis, this is it. I know it's not a random occurrence. My immune system was infected by Epstein-Barr. Unfortunately, Epstein-Barr is a lifelong infection, <sighs> but I don't care. I'll just have to go back and get my B cells removed every six months, and that's fine. Because if you felt what, what I feel right now, <sighs> it's amazing. It feels so good. <sighs> it's happening. Everything is coalescing. Long gone is the time when I was waking up hours early before the alarm went off. Now it's becoming a normal thing to wake up to my alarm. When I do, I'm fully refreshed. I'm so excited for whatever the new bright day brings. After I wake up and after I eat, I get on my rowing machine. And within a few minutes, I hit my peak heart rate shooting up into peak range. For a few minutes, my heart rate races at 207 beats per minute. <laughs> According to the American Heart Organization, that exceeds even the maximum heart rate of a 20 year old, half my age. You may think it might destroy me for the rest of the day. I take it a go, it probably would have. Everything's different now. Eliminating Epstein Barr has opened my eyes and opened so many doors. It's a tsunami of changes happening inside my brain. Well, I guess my dream is over. When I first started this video, I wanted to get my entire MRI history going all the way back to at least 2007. I mean, I was diagnosed in 2004, but I, the first three years, I remember throwing the sheets of film away, but I knew that I started going to a place that got them digitally starting in 2007 or eight. I've done a big long search and they sent a notification kind of says it all. The images, there are no images to be found. I guess the entire time, all the way between 2004 to 2013 are lost to the wind. As I would say, that's fine. I don't care. Now, I'm looking forward to, in a couple of months, getting my next MRI and seeing what getting rid of Epstein-Barr will have done to, to Estebanito. I'm almost certain, without a doubt, big things are about to happen. So I had a funny realization the other day. It's only been three months since my, my infusion. And I am just, these changes are so massive. I can't believe what's going on. I don't, I can't even start to imagine what my next MRI will tell me. I think, I just have a feeling that Estaminito is just going to vanish back from my six month Ocarus infusion. A video by neurologist Dr. Brain and Beaver. That's perfect timing.
He explains patients with gluten's A gamma globulin anemia, which is a rare genetic condition, which patients don't have B cells, don't develop MS. There's not a single case to his knowledge of someone having both MS and rooms of API gametogenin anemia. As the doctor puts it, it's as if people with the disease are immune to develop getting MS. Like you need B lymphocytes to have MS. No B cells, no way that EBV can affect them and cause MS. It's been six months of waiting, but the day is finally here. It seems like each and every time I have a new MRI scan done, I pour over them, measuring, then remeasuring a dozen more times. I know I'm way out of my expertise, but I'm not flippant when I say, when I use the word cure. Even though I'm not an expert, doing simple math and combining it with how I feel tells me more than what a radiologist report ever could. That said, after studying these latest MRI scans, Esamanito is teaching me new and exciting details I never even thought about a year ago. Let's start by adding the latest readings on to the graph I made. Make no mistake, as Espinito shrinks, myelin is taking its place. The exciting detail is the graph will never be able to show at what point the various levels of, I don't know what you'd call it, remyelination, recovery, re restoration, anything. I can't find a way to say this. The return of life before MS? Do you get what I'm trying to say? I'm excited because I know now more than ever, I'm way beyond that point. I think it's probably the case that MS doctors will forever say there will never be a cure for MS because it's genetics and it's a multifactorial disease. But a functional cure is a cure nonetheless. You can restore your lost myelin by practicing the five essential elements. And now I know the big kicker, the elimination of Epstein-Barr virus. I know this journey has brought me to this point where I feel my MS is completely gone. <laughs> and even better, I know exactly how I can ensure symptoms will never return. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss a video. Until the next one.